Well, welcome everyone. So good to see everybody uh, and the opportunity to, to visit with you all today. Um, you know, I really want to thank everybody for being here to meet our new head men's and women's swimming coach. Um, your presence really means a great deal to our programs, our swimming programs, but also our athletic department as a whole. You know, at Pitt, when we say the words comprehensive excellence, it means that every team matters. And we want every experience of our student athletes to be extraordinary. So today, I'm really more than excited to, um, about the future of our swimming student athletes experiences because of our new leader. Um, a special thanks to our administrative team, um, and in particular, Wendy Myers, who led our search process. Um, and oversees our swimming and diving teams. And thank you to all the coaches and staff who are involved throughout the search. Um, there's no question, you win with people. And it takes a tremendous university and a team to bring the best people to our program. And I'm confident that we have found that person and leader in Chase. Um, as I have said before, hiring a head coach is by far the most important responsibility in leading an athletic department um, because our head coaches directly impact the lives of other people's children. You know, it is a critical decision. And this hire is significant because it's an opportunity um, for Chase to lead and change the trajectory of our swimming programs. We set out great expectations for what we wanted in a leader in our swimming programs, and we did not want to compromise on what is important. We wanted someone with integrity always, incredible confidence, an excellent communicator, a genuine relationship builder, strong recruiting connections here in the state of Pennsylvania and elsewhere, a passion to compete in the ACC, and experience building a national championship winning culture. And we found that leader in Chase Kreitler. Um, when I first met Chase, uh, you know, I just wanted to share a little bit about what stood out immediately. Um, he's prepared to lead. He was prepared and knowledgeable about Pitt. He's astute. He has studied and learned from some of the most accomplished head coaches in this profession. Um, he's a relationship builder, and he can't wait to be a head coach at the right place at the right time. And we are really fortunate to have found Chase at the right time here at Pitt. And after hours of uh, talking with Wendy, researching coaches, studying programs, calling colleagues, you know, when we asked Chase two questions, um, why do you coach and why Pitt, his answers told me what I needed to know most. Chase coaches for all the right reasons. He coaches because of the relationships he builds with his student athletes. He described coaching as an avenue to mentorship for life. The lessons he teaches his athletes and the relationships he builds will last a lifetime. He describes setting great expectations with his athletes, instilling belief in them, then developing the plan, putting in the work together, and getting the results they want to achieve. This entire process of coaching has a profound impact and creates a bond for the rest of their lives. And when I asked Chase why Pitt, he responded, because it's never been done before in the ACC. And what that told me was he has the courage and the confidence and the desire to build our swimming programs to be competitive and, com and compete at the top of the ACC. And like all sports in the ACC, when you're competing for an ACC championship, you're in the hunt for a national championship. And Chase knows what it takes to get to that stage. He comes to Pitt after, after having spent the last four years as an assistant coach at Cal. Um, they won four straight consecutive uh, Pac-12 championships. They finished as an NCAA national runner-up in 2021 and won the national championship in 2019 and 2022. So there's no question he knows how to build and sustain a winning culture. So I'm confident we're going to love watching Chase instill a belief in our student athletes and confidence in our team and welcome him and his family, his wife Liz, and their son, who's being so good, um, John Daniel, uh, JD, um, to the City of Champions. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to introduce to you our new head men's and women's swimming coach, Chase Kreitler.
Thank you all so much. It's an absolute privilege to be here, and I am incredibly honored to be entrusted with the, the direction, the leadership of the swimming and diving programs at University of Pittsburgh. Um, I'd like to take a minute to thank Heather and to thank Wendy and the rest of the search committee. Um, I felt like I made some really good connections as I went through the interview process, and I kept studying people's bios and on everybody's bio, you know, multiple people said, you know, the, the people in the athletic department, the people in Pittsburgh are what makes this place special. And that's what I experienced here. That's one of the things that drew me in is I could feel the support. It was tangible. And I was like, we can do it here. We can absolutely do it here. So I'd also like to thank my wife, Liz, and JD, this is a, it's a family effort. Um, she's an incredibly accomplished professional in her own right. We've made family moves for her career before, and so um, it's, a, it's a big deal for us to, to take this move, and I'm excited to be here together as a family. Um, we, uh, I had the privilege yesterday morning to meet with the, the student athletes for the first time, which is always a special occasion. Um, you know, there's a little bit of nervousness on both sides. They're kind of wondering, you know, what, what's coach going to be like? Um, and it was awesome. We had, we had a great first meeting, um, and, and we kind of talked about a few things. You know, Heather stole my thunder a little bit about why, but we, we did. We talked about why, why, why do I coach, you know, why Pittsburgh? And, um, and Heather alluded to this. It's about mentorship, right? And there's, there's a lot of different ways that you can mentor people. Um, it's very unique to do it in college athletics because you get to spend 20 hours a week with the people that you're mentoring. If you're a professor, maybe you get four and a half hours and you're busy in office hours. You know, as a, as a coach, you get a lot of time. You travel together. There's, and there is a unique bond when you're on mission together with people to help them accomplish their dreams. And so it's an absolute privilege to, to do that. And we all love sports, right? It's an athletic department. I love swimming and diving. I love track and field. I love sports that challenge you to push yourself to your absolute limit to see what you have inside yourself. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's an absolute privilege. So that's why I talked to the athletes about, you know, why I coach, why Pittsburgh. Um, and they're, you know, I'm so excited to meet the alums. There's a number of uh, people that have been All-Americans, and there's a history of Big East titles. But the transition to the ACC is different. Um, it's an elite swimming conference. I've got friends at many of the other universities. They've done a great job building programs. And it hasn't been done here before. And I think some other people were scared to, to you know, take it on, to be honest with you. And for me, it's, it's invigorating. I love the challenge. I love the excitement. I'm excited about hiring a staff that first and foremost cares about the student athletes as people. Um, before athletes and uh, a staff that is going to help me build this into um, a place where we can do some really special things. So Pittsburgh, though, is, you know, it's a perfect place. Um, Pennsylvania is, is a place that regularly produces elite swimming and diving uh, at the high school level, at the club level, and so there's great in-state recruiting. Swimming is a hard sport. I mean, all sports are hard, but swimming is a hard sport right? It's, it's the better shape you get in, the more you can do in the same amount of time. Like, it's just tough. And so the, the, the blue collar ethos and work ethic in this area is a perfect match for a place where you got to work hard. And, and everybody's working hard, but we have to do something extra special to, to move ahead of other programs. Um, you know, and I would say for me personally, it's really important to work at an academic institution that is, is really highly regarded across the country. And so the academic opportunities that we're inviting student athletes and recruits into here at, at Pitt and all the way through graduate programs, it's amazing. Like I love that opportunity to, to be able to invite people to get a world-class education and then also to pursue their athletic dreams together. And uh, as Heather said, this, this city celebrates champions. They like winners. And so I am excited to celebrate the other coaches in the department um, in, in kind of our collective effort to move the athletic department forward. And I'm confident that we're going to do some really special things here. Um, so that's, that's kind of the why that we talked about yesterday. The what is, the what is we're, we're going we're gonna to build a powerhouse. Um, it's it's going to take a little bit of time, 
we're going to take care of the, the student athletes that are in the program right now. They're going to get faster. Um, we've got a phenomenal diving coach. Um, Katie and I are excited to build this program together. And we're going to recruit some really uh, good people that are great students that happen to be good swimmers and divers that want to see how far they can go in this sport. Um, and I'm looking forward to um, having ACC champions, NC2A champions, national team members, Olympians, Olympic medalists. You know, when you walk into the pool, Trees is a beautiful pool. When you walk in, like, the thought that I have is we can get it done here. We can absolutely get it done here. There is nothing stopping us. Um, so, and I, I was excited to talk with the student athletes to get their input, what they're looking for, and, and that's what they want. Like, they want excellence. They want to see how good we can be as a team. Um, and then kind of the last thing was how we talked about how we're going to do it. How are we going to do it? And there's a lot of different things that we're going to do, and I'm not going to tell you all our secret sauce of, uh, at once, but uh, one of the things I'll just kind of highlight, 30,000 foot view, is we are going to be process oriented, right? It's so easy to be like, oh, well, we want to be a top five team, you know, next year at ACCs. There are thousands of decisions we make each week as people that move us either towards our goals or further away from our goals. And so we're going to talk about what it looks like to have a championship lifestyle in your relationships, in your academics, in your athletics. And so I cannot be more excited to, to get here, to, to get settled in, uh, to start working with the student athletes and to hit the recruiting trail because we're going to do some, some amazing things. Jerry DePaul from the Pittsburgh Trib. You probably answered a lot of the questions I, I was asking, but other than hiring a staff and hiring and recruiting athletes, what's the, how do you, how do you build a w winning culture in, in a program? I, I, I Jerry, nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. Um, there's a lot of things that go into it, and I think, um, you know, the first thing is, is as we're recruiting student athletes, and I talked about this a little bit, trying to find good people that are great students. We have to find people that want to see how far they can go, people that are already swimming year-round, that are already going to junior nationals, senior nationals, that are trying to make uh, a world juniors championship, that are maybe for another country have already made their country's respective Olympic team. And so it kind of starts with it, finding the people that have the si same mindset, bringing those people together. And then fostering a sense of team. You know, one of the most amazing things about the reason why I love college coaching as opposed to other um, levels of swimming is the team aspect of it is incredible. And so as we kind of foster that team closeness, um, you know, we talk about what it looks like to be a good teammate, how to create an encouraging environment. And I think that kind of gets to the heart of your question is, you know, I've, I've had We've all had the opportunities, those of us that have done athletics, to have a number of different types of coaches. Some of, they all have an impact. Some of the impact is not good. Some of the impact is average, and some of them have life-changing impacts. And so um, as I think about the people that have impacted me, it's been people that have been really encouraging, um, that really believe that we can get it done, and then people that also have high standards of excellence. And so I think as we foster the team environment, um, to, to accomplish and, and set that culture. It, it's going to be a very encouraging place. The staff's going to be really encouraging, but also we're going to hold the student athletes to really high standards, and they're going to hold themselves to high standards. The best teams that I've worked with that have won national championships, the team is coaching itself at a certain level where you've got juniors and seniors in the program that are mentoring the freshmen, that are excited to help them and advance them, even if that means they're losing a relay spot. So there's a level of selflessness to that as well. Thank you. Yeah. Is international recruiting a big part of, of swimming, and how do you go about that? Is a lot of rely on contacts and connections, or how do you kind of approach it? Yeah, that's a great question. International recruiting is a big part, and I think if, if you look at the model that's been set forth by a couple other programs that have, have really made the jump in the ACC in particular, but really there's two programs in the ACC that have done a good job over the last 10 to 20 years that were sort of, you know, towards the bottom of the conference that have moved up to the top. You have to do a great job with uh, U.S. recruiting, and we, I've got relationships, and the staff that I'm going to hire is going to have relationships with club coaches, high school coaches all over the country. But with international recruiting, 
there's a lot of young women and men that want to come to the U.S. They want that experience. And so I've got, you know, I've been really fortunate to be at some places like University of California, Berkeley, and Louisiana State, and Eastern Michigan, where um, we've had a lot of international recruits. So it's actually, it's not that hard. <laughs> they want to come. Uh, and if you're excited and, and, you know, it's a good match, um, you know, I'm really fortunate. We've got a bunch of we were talking to the Polish guys on the team yesterday, and I was speaking to you know the few Polish words that I know from coaching some athletes over the years, and they were getting fired up. Um, one of my uh, college teammates was the head Olympic coach for Poland, so we're going to get some Polish kids um, to start. So, and we've I've got you know the NC two A champion that I coached this past year is from Spain, so you know he had already told some of his friends about me. So we're gonna we're gonna roll with it. Um, well, I can speak one, um, <laughs> but uh, I know I, I know enough Polish words to be dangerous and to get mostly male Polish swimmers excited. Uh, I know how to say power two different ways, and they, they love that. Um, oh, and a little bit of Spanish, just enough to, to order some really good food. Um, but Chase, the, uh, the athletic department has put significant investments into its programs in the last five, six years, uh, whether that's facilities, coaches, staff, et cetera. How encouraging, how much did you look at that? I mean, w what was that as far as when you decided to come here? Did that play a big role? Yeah, I'm actually, I'm really glad that you mentioned that. Um, that was really important to me. You know, I, I, having worked uh, under a number of different great head coaches and really, you know, just tried to pay attention to things that set programs apart over the years. I had my list of things to evaluate. And to be honest with you, sitting down with Heather, like, it, it was easy. Like, I, I knew from, from our meeting, like, she wants to win. And there, you know, there's other head coaching opportunities out there where they're excited to have swimming and diving programs with kids that don't get in trouble and they want to have them have some success every once in a while. And that's fine. And, like, we're going to do those things. We're going to have academic success and not get in trouble and be great citizens. But, like, we want to see how good we can be. And, and I felt that support from Heather. I felt that support from Wendy. And, and it goes into, you know, the vision of what I was talking about with wanting to add, you know, assistant coaches that really have experience, um, that are great people, but have experience coaching NC2A All-Americans already. You know, they've already done it. It's like it's an extension of, you know, my experience. Um, so that was a huge part of it, feeling the success, kind of feeling the wind in the sails where it's like, yeah, all right, if, we're, if, we're, if I feel the support, it's like we can do it here. Absolutely. Chase, a lot of people have mentioned how you excel at building relationships with players or swimmers and divers. And what do you do differently than other coaches that makes you kind of forge these really strong relationships? That's a great question. Um, I was so fortunate to have an amazing coach my middle two years in college, uh, a guy named Morgan Bailey, who's now uh, working in the FBI and counterterrorism. Uh, he's a unique person. Um, and he was a model for me um, in a lot of ways. But the thing, you know, the, the key is, right, and, and Heather mentioned this, it's, it's about people. And so, and like I said, you know, why I do this, it's an avenue for mentorship and, and swimming and diving just happens to be the vehicle for that. But if you care about people, if you're kind to people, if you get to know them, if you see what makes them tick, if you see, you know, what are their goals? You know, even the best uh, student athletes or professional athletes I've worked with, are going to stop swimming, right, at some point, whether they're, you know, 31, 32, you know, some of them 24, and, and they're going to move on to other things in their life. And so it's, it's just building relationships with people, letting them know that you care about them, that, you know, you're going to be a person that um, they can be open, honest, vulnerable with, and I'm going to help them through their challenges, right? Because any sport <laughs> that's especially a hard sports are just – it presents challenges on a daily basis, not to mention the challenge of, you know, moving across the country or the world and being a student athlete and trying to form relationships and all, all the things that go into that. So, but it comes down to care. If you care about people, and I think particularly in, in the highest level athletics, if you care about people apart from their performance, right? We've all seen coaches where if it's going great, you know, it's all smiles and high fives. And if it's going, you know, poorly, that reveals their character. But I think if you have that consistent high level of care, no matter what's going on, they will swim hard for you, <laughs> really hard for you. So, Are there any common character traits between a coach 
and, and, and a guy working for the FBI in counterterrorism? <laughs> Yeah, your ability to talk to people, especially if he's undercover. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no, absolutely. No, I, and, and we've, we've had conversations at length about this, about his uh, ability to go undercover and, and talk with people and get people to trust him and just be genuine. Um, so, yeah, I think there are. <laughs>